everyone, it's Sostein here. I'm here to talk to you today about my black and white dress. So this dress was based on an 1887 fashion plate I found at the Metropolitan Museum of Art's online gallery. I'll link that below, but this is the image and I loved it. I initially thought about making in the, it in the original red and white, but I really thought about it and I had the perfect fabric in mind. This is one that I found at Mood a couple of years back, and I love the sample, so I kind of kept it in the back of my mind. And now that I had a project, I went ahead and ordered 12 yards of it. So here I am finally getting dressed in this costume. So I'll talk about all the different resources I use to actually make every layer of this costume or where I got it. So initially, I start with the stockings and the boots. These stockings and boots are from American Duchess, which is one of my favorite shoe places. And I am wearing the Colettes, and I am aware that these boots are actually 1890 to 1910 boots rather than 1887 boots, but I honestly love them so much, I just got them and I decided to wear them with this outfit in particular just because I like them. Always wear your boots before you put on your corset. It's really hard to bend over and actually lace up your boots after. So that being said, let's get on to the layer that I'm wearing right there. It's actually a combination underwear from the Edwardian era. I don't actually own a Victorian slip, mostly because I find slips very uncomfortable. Generally, I don't even wear them, but here I am just wearing it for the sake of modesty. If you are curious about that beautiful lace on the combination underwear, it's from a site called To Lace With Love, and it's they have the most beautiful vintage laces. They are pricey, but you know, they are gorgeous and nothing really compares to like really old antique lace. So I do recommend them. The fabric is a Batiste from Farmhouse Fabrics if you're interested. So uh, the pattern was made with the truly Victorian, but let's move on to the corset. So the corset, I really don't like making my own corsets. So my corset is from Red Threaded. They do fantastic historical corsetry. And especially since corsets have such different shapes depending on which year, and that can change as much as like every 10 years in fact. So um, the fact that they have a really great 1880s corset is fantastic. After that, I use a bustle that I got from, it's called Les Costumes des Jeans, and they are, they make beautiful large bustles. These bustles are very large, they jut right back as you can see, and I really like them. However, I would like to let you know that if you don't want as big a bustle, that's totally okay. Not everyone went around with a huge bustle. And even though I find this one very comfortable, if you sit down, it really collapses very nicely so you can sit comfortably. Um, I can understand wanting a smaller one. And for my smaller gowns, I actually use my, tr um, my red threaded one from this site. And I really recommend that as well. It's all about what you want for your personal silhouette. So that being said, afterwards I put on my petticoat. My petticoat is made from a cotton poplin. It's a, I just got it just a normal cotton poplin. It's 100% cotton and it's white. So using those two tags, I just bought whatever was cheapest from fabric.com. I use a pattern from Truly Victorian. And then after that, it's time for the underskirt. My underskirt is made out of that beautiful cotton dobby I described, and I actually used a special lining called tarlatan for the front half of the skirt, and used that to give it that nice stiff shape. It's very stiff. I would recommend buying the regular as opposed to the stiff one um, from this site. It's only $2 a yard, so it's, um, it's fairly affordable. And then I used cotton poplin to line the back. I use a serger to um, combine the tarlatan to the fabric and then sewed it together. My serger is the Baby Lock Victory. Just a heads up, I am a Baby Lock ambassador, but 
I really love this machine. It has jet air threading, which makes threading so much easier. And on top of all that, it goes really, really quickly and cuts the fabric really fast and well. So I recommend it. And I actually flatline all of my pieces with a serger for that reason. It's just really convenient. After that goes the overskirt. Now you may be wondering where I get these patterns. Um, for the actual overskirt and as well as the bodice, I used Ageless Patterns, which gets actual Victorian patterns from fashion magazines and reprints them enlarged for you to use. Now they don't really test the patterns out to make sure that they go together perfectly or anything like that, but they do add a seam allowance already. And honestly, if you follow their directions, which granted are actual Victorian instructions, so they're not particularly detailed, you really do get a beautiful finish to everything. So you'll notice there's a lot of adjusting. I actually have to button the back of the front piece first before I clip the skirt closed. And then I just really play around with everything until it flows correctly. that it's time for the jacket so as you can see the jacket is currently flatlined and boned the boning on that is from Burnley and Trowbridge I use their whale synthetic whalebone six millimeters and then it's currently lined with just a cotton poplin that I got from mood as well and then I put the belt on the belt sort of makes the back flat and brings it right to my back so that the waist does not jut backwards and I get that nice clean line and then I put on the collar first. The collar has a little clip in place. And then I grab my little dickie. And this is a dickie that I made from some cotton batiste I had lying around the house. The pattern came free with one of my ageless patterns. I'm not really sure which one, I just found it in the house. So then I button it in the back. And once it's buttoned, I can put the collar back down and, and kind of smooth it out. After that, I close up the front using clips and to give me that nice smooth closure. And you can see that the dickey is completely covered at the edges by the jacket itself. So I'm just using normal like clips, bar clips that I got from Joann's, or I might have actually got these bulk on eBay. I kind of ran out of Joann's clips a while back, even though the ones I do get from Joann's are slightly better quality than the ones I get off eBay. But if I can't get to Joann's, you know, I, I use what I can get. So then I just kind of smooth everything down. And then finally, I grab my bow and I put my bow on. Please note that there is just so much adjusting of the skirt to make sure that everything flows right. Like it's not just putting it on perfectly. You really do have to spend some time like smoothing things out. So the bow has some clips and I just kind of bar clip it in place. I kind of regret that. I wish I kind of thought of putting like buttons or something because it wouldn't fall all down as much and I may change it around later. So that's my dress. Afterwards, I put on a hat. My hat is from Shocking Bad Hats. And this is actually not the hat I was intending to wear with this outfit, but my final one is not ready yet. And then I'm going to grab my parasol and my parasol is this beautiful custom piece that I have. It's an actual Victorian um, parasol that has been recovered. Parasols and Co. They're on Instagram only and you and you really have to message her um, and get on her commission list. Her commission wait list is sometimes about three months and can be as long as six to eight months. So definitely go and talk to her first. So now it's time to frolic. <laughs>
watching guys and I'll be making another video soon about the fitting process for my jacket. I ended up making three mock-ups and changing the fit every single time just a little in order to make this jacket happen and there were so many crazy decisions so I can't wait to show you so I'll get into that in another video since that's just another thing altogether. Thanks for watching and remember to subscribe if you want to see more of my sewing adventures.